Ahoy! The Brimstone Sands patch is getting closer and with that the opportunity to make a lot of money. Now this isn't the first guide of this sort, but I'm hoping to have the most complete collection that we have so far of things that are related to the more obvious new items that are introduced, but also a little bit more stealthy things like some in-between stage crafting materials or items that are related to quests later in Brimstone Sands. Let's begin with the most obvious that you likely already know about, which are the Heart Runes, the new ultimate abilities. These were changed quite significantly during PTR. Initially, all of them needed a ton of runestone. Now they only need a total of 5 runestone to be upgraded to maximum from the base version. So while every player will still need some runestone, this will probably not be the major selling factor and runestone prices at the moment are usually not very inviting anyways. Instead, the other ingredients will likely be the bigger money makers. For example, corrupted lodestones are very cheap on most servers at the moment because they don't really have much of a purpose. They used to be four times as expensive as they are now. Some hard runes will require five and others ten corrupted lodestones to fully upgrade. Also, since the new area and the Halloween event will likely come out at the same time, most people will likely be busy with other things that are not corruption portals, so there's a good chance the supply will go down a lot. Instead of corrupted lodestones, some of the upgrades require 50 vials of suspended azoth. The demand for those will likely also generally increase because people will be crafting a lot more and doing less outpost rush for a while while they're busy with the new content. Beyond that, the legendary hard runes also have specific material requirements. Proceed with caution with these ones because the materials that are required almost seem a little bit trolly and I wouldn't put it past the devs that they are basically putting out bait and then switching the materials required last second so that people who try to play the market get screwed over a little bit. With that warning out of the way, the hard runes of Detonate require 20 pristine sapphires for the legendary upgrade, which I think seems to be the most realistic of these materials that might likely stay the same and honestly is relatively cheap to buy at the moment. And then there are the resources for the legendary upgrades that you need a thousand of, which for the different hard runes are Feathers, Saltpeter and Thorny Vines. Again, seems a little bit trolly, I don't know if it'll stay that way, prices have already gone up significantly for these, so consider if you really want to invest into them, maybe if they're cheap on your server. The other new high demand craft will be Rune Glass. However, as you can see here, the materials that you need for a Rune Glass case can actually all only be found in Brimstone Sands, so you can't really prepare for that. The Rune Glass itself, however, requires some materials that you can already get, and one of them are gold ingots. Now, I don't think that gold ingots are going to be massively expensive, because realistically, everyone will only need seven of these, because you can only slot them in armor and weapons. But at the same time, as I already showed you in my recent video about selling things before the patch, Brimstone Sands will have plenty of Platinum nodes. This can be used as an alternate pathway to Orichalcum ingots instead of going through Star Metal, which is typically more expensive. So while I don't expect a massive payoff from this one, I would say that stockpiling a few gold ingots for the multi-purpose they will have after the patch might be useful. And that brings us to what may very well become one of the biggest money makers after this patch, which is really uncontested so far, so I have a feeling some people are going to be very upset with me for even talking about this one. And that is the recipe for fish sauce. What you can see here is that this is a new ingredient you can craft in the kitchen, which requires a bunch of fishing materials. You need fish roe, delicate fish fillet, and fish oil, as well as seasoning blend, which you can make out of whichever seasonings you want to use, so that one's kind of irrelevant. But all of the other fishing materials that you can get here are typically relatively cheap, because they're really not used that much at the moment, except for fish oil in the occasional cooking oil. And this fish sauce will be used in all of the recipes that you see on screen right now, which you will likely not be familiar with yet, but these are recipes for 40 stat food that lasts for 60 minutes instead of the current 40. These buff foods use a variety of already familiar ingredients as well as a bunch of meats that drop from the mobs in Brimstone Sands. But what they all share is the fish sauce. As such, I absolutely expect the prices for all of these ingredients to rise. Of course, with the new greatsword being introduced, we'll also see a ton of people crafting those. 
We get into the more general crafts later in the video, but what I specifically want to look at are the named recipes for greatswords, because they all share one thing. And that thing is called Empowered Counterbalance, of which they all need two. Currently those are mainly used for hammers and most of these hammers are not really worth crafting, but after the patch, especially initially, people will try and get a lot of these crafted because they have decent perk pools. I would again recommend not going completely overboard with this, because these can only be crafted by people with very high weapon smithing, which there aren't that many of. Though it is worth pointing out that at the moment the crafted named legendary greatswords are all labeled as bind on equip. I'm not sure if this is intentional. If it is, that would most certainly increase the value of empowered counterbalance further. With brimstone sands we get a new effect similar to corruption, which is acid. And there are gear sets for every gear weight that are meant to counter this, the chitin sets. Now I don't exactly know if the chitin sets themselves will be necessary to be honest, because currently their perk pools are a little bit weird. Essentially by crafting them you're just crafting regular tier 5 gear that you can already craft, only with chitin padding in the gem slot instead. According to the description of chitin padding, you don't actually need to do that. You can simply slot the chitin padding itself into any armor slot, so you wouldn't have to craft the specific gear. But either way, you will probably want the chitin padding. Instead of needing some easy to gather resources from the new zone, as well as some runic leather and phoenix weave, this needs a chitin plate. Chitin plates are essentially an alternative upgrade to infused leather. The chitin parts will be found from mobs in the new zone, but the layered leather will not. Since everyone will likely need a few of those plates, there's a good chance that investing into a little bit of layered leather now might make things cheaper at least. At this point I quickly want to point out that by posting this I will likely cut into my own profits a lot, so if you want to make that a little less painful for me, I would much appreciate it if you consider subscribing if you haven't yet. Moving on to our next resources, another thing that will be introduced with the new patch are a 600 gear score gathering tool. I think there will be a reasonable amount of demand for them, because they give you extra modes for everything you gather. And what I think might be happening is that the crafting materials for gathering tools might go up in price. This market is a little bit difficult to play, because different people seem to value different perks more. Some people value gathering luck, some people value gathering yield, and depending on that the perks will be cheaper or more expensive on the trading post, so you just have to see which niche is maybe currently more cheap and might go more expensive. One that I personally always like are the small elk hooves, because they increase your speed after you gathered something, which just makes farming in general so much more convenient. So that is one that I try to buy when I can, but it's usually also on the more expensive side already. Now let's talk about quests. The quest to even get into Brimstone Sands requires fish oil for Marauders, which I'm assuming is likely the same for other factions, because you need to basically make a bit of a potion to get in there. So that'll probably be high in demand on the first day, but like I said, it's also needed for the fish sauce, so it'll be generally higher in demand. Additionally, there is a quest later down the line that requires Cactus Flash and Sulfur from the new zone, but also three Petal Cap and two Azoth Water. Petal cap is typically available in ridiculous amounts on a trading post, so I don't imagine that will go up much in price, but I could see the Azoth water spiking a bit. That said, because it's a little bit later in the quest line, not everyone will arrive there at the same point, and if it's staggered enough, then it won't impact the price that much. Something else that could go up in price, but it's kind of dependent on how the devs decide to go with this, are infused armor fragments. As of now, you can turn infused armor fragments, or any other infused fragments, into an infused orb, which you can use to create an additional gypsum cast per day, on top of the regular one that you can make through a gypsum orb. So effectively, using fragments to create infused orbs will allow you to increase the gear score of your greatsword twice as fast. But as of now, there is no recipe for the greatsword on Newell database that uses an infused orb, only one that uses a gypsum orb. This may very well be an intended mechanic or time gate to prevent people from power leveling greatsword expertise too fast. Or this could be an oversight and they'll introduce the infused orb version before the Brimstone Sands patch launches, in which case infused fragments would most certainly go up in value a lot. And on the topic of increasing greatsword gear score, an alternative way to do that is crafting 600 gear score greatswords. So I would expect all the tier 5 materials, Asmodium, Glittering Ebony, 
and runic leather to go up in price though there is a good chance that many people who are trying to run that strategy have already started buying their stuff but i expect phoenix weave to go up in price too with the new zone we get the golden scarabs which allow you to craft gear with two locked perks which in my opinion will lead to a lot of people crafting a lot of things in general and needing a lot of resources for that so i think all of the tier 5 materials through the board will be going up in price runestone possibly being the only exception because aside of the hard rune stuff it's actually not possible to use a runestone in combination with a scarab a scarab can only be used with timeless shards so i think a lot of people will prefer locking two perks with the scarabs and using timeless shards for that which may mean that some timeless shards go up in price again as well especially if you're planning to craft something specific you're probably better off just grabbing some timeless shards right now Refining materials could also end up a little bit more expensive because they're needed for a lot of the new things and I think a lot more crafting will be happening, but I wouldn't imagine it will have a completely drastic impact. Now we've talked a lot about things that you should buy before Brimstone, but there are also a lot that you should probably sell instead. That's a video I already made and I will link that right here. And before you go, I also like to give you a little bit of a bonus tip, but not before reminding you to subscribe and click the bell if you found this video useful at all. So one of the problems when you watch a video like this is, if you go to the trading post after to buy things, you may not necessarily know what a good price for one of the items that I mentioned is, because the price may be very different on your server, it may just generally be uh, something that is highly valued on your server in particular, or it may be something that people have already bought out after they also watched the video and now the price is much higher than it used to be. So in order to find out if you're actually getting a good deal, I would recommend checking nwmarketprices.com. It has most servers and you can see what the current price for an item is there as well as what the price over time was. So that makes it much easier to find out if you're actually getting a good price. I will link that down below. Thanks for watching. Duke Sloth, out.